Good evening. It's the Thursday, July 1, 2021 here in Cebu City. I'm Cherry Ann Lim and this is Sunstar Tonight. Eight PhilHealth officials and six officers and employees of the Adventist Hospital Cebu are now facing criminal and administrative charges over their alleged involvement in COVID-19 benefit claims anomalies. Charlie Coronel reports. The National Bureau of Investigation, or NBI, in Central Visayas has filed criminal and administrative charges against the eight officials and employees of the Philippine Health Insurance Corporation, or PhilHealth Central Visayas, and six officers and personnel of the Adventist Hospital Cebu for their alleged involvement in irregularities on COVID-19 benefit claims. NBI Regional Director Rinan Oliva said that this is the third case they are filing against the allegations of corruption and irregularities of PhilHealth. Last October 2020, the agency also charged several complaints against the eight field health officials and four officials and employees of Perpetual Socor Hospital in Cebu City for their alleged involvement in COVID-19 benefit claims anomalies. In February 2021, NBI Central Visayas also filed charges against Chongwa Hospital in Cebu City for alleged false COVID-19 claims. Oliva said that the latest charges involving the Adventist Hospital Cebu were filed before the office of the Ombudsman Visayas last June 29. Adventist Hospital Cebu's Vice President for Operations, Joel Aganan, said, As of now, the administration is still awaiting the official communication. Field health officials were also charged over violation of the revised Administrative Code of 1987 and violation of Republic Act 6713 or the Code of Conduct and Ethical Standards of Public Officials and Employees, while Dr. Francisco Napigit of the Adventist Hospital was also filed additional charges for allegedly issuing false medical certificates. Oliva said these cases stemmed from a randomly forwarded and approved claim of the Adventist Hospital Cebu. A certain Irvin Gairama, a retired bank employee and field health beneficiary, was confined on May 27-28, 2020, at Adventist Hospital in Cebu City due to cough and shortness of breath. Gairama was admitted with an initial diagnosis of ambulatory and acute respiratory failure secondary to pulmonary tuberculosis. On May 28, 2020, Gairama died at the hospital. Oliva said Dr. Napigit, the attending physician, issued his death certificate with remarks of cause of death as COVID pneumonia probable severe. NBI said during that time, the result of the initial antibody test was already available and proved that the patient was negative for COVID-19. On June 3, 2020, the result of the RT-PCR test was released by the Vicente Soto Memorial Medical Center, which was negative for COVID-19. On June 15, 2021, Oliva said the Adventist hospital officers prepared the field health claim documents and used the alleged false death certificate as basis when they submitted the same to field health and continued to claim the benefit package of 333,519 pesos. Chari Coronel, 30 personnel, including the chief of police of the Mandawe City Police Office Station 1, have been relieved from their posts after a surprise inspection last June 26 revealed their police station to be dirty. Kenneth Torres reports. Around 30 personnel, including the chief of police of the Mandawi City Police Station 1, were relieved from their posts due to failure to comply with the cleanliness policy. Police Regional Office Center Visayas Director Police Brigadier General Ronnie Montejo said that the National Internal Affairs Service found the police station dirty after a surprise inspection last June 26. Clothes were hung to dry inside the station, garbage bins were not labeled properly, and an empty bottle of alcoholic beverage and a dog poop were found. 
Inspectors also found only a few personnel at the station. Montejo added that the chief of police of the station, Police Major Eric Kingoyon, had already given warning during the first inspection which was found to be dirty. The regional director said that the 30 personnel will undergo transformation program while investigation is ongoing. They will be the one to clean the five police stations in Mandawi City. PNP Chief Guillermo Eliazar said what happened to Mandawi City Police Station 1 should serve as a warning to all policemen, especially police commanders, to comply with the PNP's intensified cleanliness policy. Under this program, all police precincts and stations must be kept clean and presentable as part of efforts to regain public trust. Kenneth Torres and Star Tonight. The Cebu City Emergency Operations Center has proposed to make the requirements more stringent for inbound travelers entering the city's seaports. Chari Coronel reports. The Cebu City Emergency Operations Center, or EOC, has proposed to amend Executive Order 125, which stated the requirements needed for inbound travelers who will enter Cebu City seaports. Mayor Edgardo Labella issued EO 125 last March 25. In a resolution, the EOC proposed that all arriving passengers, regardless of the local government unit of destination, should present either a negative RT-PCR test result or anti Antigen test result prior to travel to Cebu City. The RT-PCR test should be taken 72 hours prior to departure, while antigen test should be taken 48 hours prior to departure. Exempted from these requirements are government-authorized persons outside of residence. The EOC also proposed that those with history of COVID-19 infection can present their positive test result of the RT-PCR with date not more than three months from travel and isolation certificate from a DOH-accredited isolation facility. Under the EO-125, only Cebu City residents, private APOR, and tourists are required to present a negative COVID test and the city only accepts RT-PCR test results. For persons traveling to Cebu City in transit, the travelers have to present negative RT-PCR test results taken 72 hours prior to departure or negative antigen test result taken at least 48 hours prior to departure. In the EO, only a travel pass through permit is needed for transit passengers. The EOC also proposed to delete the provision of the EO that mandated the barangays to monitor the travelers. It stated it would be irrelevant as all arriving passengers, regardless of the LJU of destination, must submit negative COVID-19 test result. The office came up with these endorsements after the EOC seaport swabbing cluster noted a steady decline on the travelers' compliance. City Councilor Joel Garganera, who is the EOC Deputy Chief Implementer, is hoping that Labelia will look into the endorsement as soon as possible. Chari Coronel, Sunstar tonight. The Al Volcano is now under alert level 3 after it generated a plume as high as 1 kilometer this afternoon. Towns near the Volcano Island are now implementing forced evacuation. Kenneth Torres reports. The Philippine Institute of Volcanology or FIVOX has raised the alert status of the Al Volcano after a short-lived phreatogmatic eruption that generated a plume as high as 1 km around 3 p.m. this afternoon. The Al Volcano is now under alert level 3, which means there is a magmatic unrest and there could be more eruptions. Residents of the high-risk barangays of the municipalities of Laurel and Agoncillo in Batangas were evacuated due to possible hazards of pyroclastic density currents and volcanic tsunami. Entry into these areas is prohibited. Residents around the Taal Lake shore are advised to take precautionary measures and be vigilant of possible lake water disturbances. Kenneth Torres, and Star Tonight. To get the latest, visit www.sunstar.com.ph. Follow us on our YouTube channel and official social media accounts on Twitter and Facebook. I'm Sherry Ann Lim. Thanks for watching the Sunset Tonight.
see you again tomorrow. Good night.